Half of U.S. companies, according to a Fox Business article here and a new study, are preparing to cut jobs. This is according to a new survey by consultant PwC. They polled more than 700 U.S. executives and board members from various industries. About half of the respondents said they're preparing to reduce headcount or already have, with 52% having implemented hiring freezes. On top of that, roughly 46% of companies are either dropping or reducing signing bonuses, which were commonplace, and in some places still are. Stay tuned for that part of it. Another 44% are rescinding offers that they have previously put out. Uh, I'm just going to stop here for a second. Okay, Some of this is preventative maintenance, and some of this is panic. I'm telling you, if the pandemic taught me anything, oh boy, oh boy, you, you, you ever know when you're about ready to inch out on the end of a diving board and say something that needs to be said, but inevitably is going to hurt somebody's feelings, and then you go, it's got to be said. So here it is. If the pandemic showed me, this is my opinion, if the pandemic showed me anything, it's that we have a scourge of weak, scared leaders. That's what the pandemic showed me. All walks of life, politics, weak, scared leaders who acted weak and acted scared. Business leaders who acted weak and scared. Sports leaders that acted weak and scared. We have a problem in this country, and it is a it's bigger and a whole lot wider than just leadership. However, it is profoundly affecting the most influential group in our society, and that is leaders. And let me tell you what it is. The fear of being criticized. Oh, I didn't plan to say that today, but somebody better write that down. There's so much depth in what I just said, you better not miss it. And you better ask yourself, this is bonus content. And I'm going to get right back to this, but but here's what's going on. And it ties into this. Weak, scared leaders panic. Strong, clear leaders chill. They do. They go, all right, we got a storm coming. And instead of freaking out, I'm going to chill for a minute and go, well, how is this storm going to affect us? What do we know about the storm? Which way is it coming in? What are the factors? Weak, fearful leaders panic. Strong, clear leaders, well, they make solid decisions. And so what you're seeing with this survey is a is two buckets. You have some strong, clear leaders go, all right, we're gonna we're gonna just uh we're gonna uh uh Sorry, lost my train of thought because my my ears are going bananas here, folks. I'm sorry. These little things in here, my voice is coming in and out and I got distracted. Strong, clear leaders say, I see a storm coming, and so we're just going to prepare for the storm. We're not going to panic. We're going to make some preparations. So that would be a hiring freeze, right? Okay, we're going to chill for a bit. Let's stop hiring for now. Let's just stay calm and let's just put a pause on, on hiring and see how the storm plays out. Okay, the... Weak, fearful leader panics and starts laying people off. Oh no! Ah! Ah! That'll lay some people off. You know, and so that's what you see right now. Two camps. Hey, that's not in the article. That's my analysis, right? You don't get those sound effects either in the article. So here's the reason that I share this. When you see headlines like this, you can't freak out too. Ah, 50% of, of employers are going to lay people off. I'm going to lose my job and I'm going to starve and we're going to be living under a bridge. And ah! Like, hey, relax. You cannot control. You can't control what your leader is going to do. What you can control is your response. What's your plan for the storm? That's why I share this. The job market is still crazy hot. We are at 3.5% unemployment. This despite headlines of the last two months. Google, Facebook, Peloton, Carvana, laying people off. 
Well, again, they're laying people off because they either overhired and again, they are, they are responsible to the stockholders. And so that's what big public companies do. They'll staff up. And then when there's maybe possible signs of downturn, they staff down. It's not the end of the world. Relax. Keep in mind the July jobs report showed that the economy added 525,000 jobs, way beyond expectations of most economists. They thought it was going to be in the 200,000. So I'm just trying to be the voice of reason and go, relax. The media makes their living scaring the ever-living you-know-what out of you. All right. Now let's look into another headline that's very specific. Ford, right? One of the big auto makers is laying off 2,000 salaried employees and about 1,000 agency personnel as it looks to lead a new era of connected and electric vehicles. This is a statement from Ford Executive Chairman Bill Ford and CEO Jim Farley. This is what they said. Building this future requires changing and reshaping virtually all aspects of the way we have operated for more than a century. Pause. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Don't just read a headline. Ford's laid off 3,000 workers, and then you get heartburn and call your wife and freak out. What was the statement? Well, we're changing all aspects of the way we've operated. Why? Because the trend in the marketplace is dictating they do it because of electric vehicles. I mean, that F-150 has been an absolute, innovative, unbelievable kind of mountaintop for everybody else. You know, you've seen the commercials. You've read the stories. You could power your entire house off of the electric Ford 150. This is a massive shift. Ford, this isn't a bad thing. They're going, look, we got to make some changes. The way we're staffed and the way we've operated is not the way we're going to operate in the future. That's what that says. The statement goes on. It requires focus, clarity, and speed. Uh, let me break that down. So if you've got 3,000 employees that largely serve an old way of operating and the new way is going to require different types of employees, maybe more automation, different systems, well, then that's why they're making the changes. It ain't because Ford's freaking out and wringing their hands. The statement goes on. It means redeploying resources and addressing our cost structure, which is uncompetitive versus traditional new competitors. Again, that's the sign of a good, healthy company. Wait a second. Our cost structures are off. We're not competitive with our competitors. You don't criticize that and go, oh, no, you go, oh, that's well done. It's well done. So, again, when you see these headlines, dive into the story. Get different stories, multiple vantage points on what's going on. Hey, we're in an eensy, teensy, weensy recession. You're going to be okay. Trust me. Stay tuned. I'll keep you informed and equipped.